यस इट्स लाइव यहां से इसको ठीक करो ये ठीक है ना यस देयर आर पीपल हैव जॉइंड इन YouTube Okay, uh, let's check. Oh yes, we are live now. Welcome to retreat at Godridge Property, a home where life. Oh, let's start. It's one minute to go. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is our forty-five uh, uh, webinar in this series. Today, uh, this webinar is little bit different. Today, we are not going for the. Uh, Uh, as usual, the presentations and uh, research because our uh, today's guest is uh, more than that. He did his uh, full full career uh, doing the science and researches, and then very good administrator in the science. He uh, did many uh, renowned positions and lead sci- agricultural science in India. so uh, it is our opportunity to learn something through the interactions it's uh, i'm sure it's motivate all of us uh, it's uh, really uh, going to be interesting and uh, sir has a, a very good thoughts in many and very prominent thoughts in many aspects so we try to learn these things today uh, this webinar uh, assisted with uh, shoma and uh, dr tamina islam from university of dhaka bangladesh uh shoma will uh, introduce bioengine and our guest lecturer professor mangala rai and tamina will do the interaction sessions i will collect all the questions from the youtube live chat and uh, try to bring this questions uh, as a interactive form with the sir uh, at the be- end of this uh, webinar i will give the feedback link please submit this link through your registered email address and you will get the certificate within two days from our website so it's start soma please uh, start the uh, webinar hello everyone welcome bioengine a platform from which researchers and scientists can present their research to the world and future scientists can gain knowledge perspective and inspiration we are doing this through our webinars and publications thank you for being a part of today's webinar series as more people are joining in let me provide some housekeeping information related to today's webinar please note that after attending today's talk you can apply for a certificate of participation for this you need to submit the feedback form that will be provided multiple times in the youtube chat after the presentation when you fill out the feedback form please use the same email address you used in the registration form and remember to mention your full institute name and address mismatch in email id may result in non identification of participants and your certificate may not be issued you can collect your participation certificates after 2 to 3 days from our website bioengine does not send certificates through email please make sure you have enabled youtube chat on your device so that you can interact and submit your webinar related questions we will collect all the relevant questions for our speaker I will take a moment to talk about another integral part of Bioengine, the Bioengine Plant Science Journal. You can find the journal on our website journal section. It is a peer-reviewed, open-access, international online journal and completely free of charge. We encourage students and scholars to submit your articles as we seek to publish papers that are relevant in the fields of plant science research. You may submit your original research, reviews, mini reviews, summary of a recent original research, or your perspective, novel concepts, and policies. Selection of manuscripts will be based on novel research, original data, synthesis, or concepts without plagiarism and violation of any copyright. We welcome submissions from all fields of plant sciences. 
You may also send your published scientific posters to be displayed on the poster gallery of our website. Please visit our website to register for upcoming webinars. Connect with BioEngine via Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. The esteemed guest for today's interactive session is Professor Mangala Rai. Professor Rai is a world famous agriculture scientist and held the post of Secretary, Department of Agriculture Research and Education, also known as DARE, Government of India, the Director General ICAR for about six years. He was the Vice Chancellor of GB Panth University of Agriculture and Technology, Panthnagar. His research interests include genetics, plant breeding, seeds, and he's also interested in management, policy, and perspective planning. He was born in Ghazipur, India on 30 June 1947. He, he did his BSc from Gorakhpur University in 1967 and MSc in 1969, and then PhD in 1973 from Banaras Hindu University. He started his career as a junior plant breeder from the RBS College, Agra. Then he was scientist for Central Soil Salinity Research Institute. Then he was a plant breeder, come reader in Orissa University of Agriculture and Technology, Bhuvaneshwar. He was then a project coordinator, then an OST, Technology Missions on Oil Seeds, then an Assistant Director General, then an Assistant Director General for Policy and Perspective Planning, then a Deputy Director General Crop Sciences and Secretary, Department of Agriculture Research and Education. Then he was a member and Vice President Board of Governors via the uh, ERI, ICRISAT, CIMIT, Biodiversity Board, Rome, IIM, Bengaluru, etc., varying between two to seven years. He was the Vice Chancellor of GV Panth University, uh, um, Agriculture and Technology, Panthnagar. Professor Rai, welcome to BioEngine. Dr. Tahmina Islam will conduct this interactive session. She is the Assistant Professor at the Department of Botany, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. So without further ado, let's begin today's session. Tamina, over to you now. Thank you, Shoma. Thank you very much. Uh, with this, I, I also welcome Dr. Mangala Rai to our today's webinar. Uh, I am hoping really this session will be much more interesting because this is going to be a very interactive session with us. And lots of students are there, lots of young scientists are there who wants to hear from the prominent scientists. So, sir, I will start with uh, some very few uh, kind of uh, interesting question with you for, regarding your journey as a scientist and everything. So um, if you're ready, we can continue. So should I start, sir? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. thank you, sir. So first of all, I, I would like to really know that please share your journey as a researcher with our viewers. No, actually, our journey started when I joined at Banaras in the university mm -hmm. in 1967. And then there was a small dissertation in partial fulfillment of the requirement of the master degree, that is cytogenetically studies of linem species with two is equal to 30 chromosomes. Mm -hmm. So from there actually I started looking into where I looked into linem staticism, linem angustifolium, linem grandiflorum, and a very small paper came out of this and which was published in Cytology as a part. So actually I started with lean seed and then I joined again for PhD where in those days mutations used to be the order of the day as well as in biometrical genetics, dial analysis, combining abilities, line into tester analysis. So from there it actually started and then in service it was a coincidence that I applied, I applied and joined use of saline water in agriculture. That is one of the coordinated research program of the Indian Council of Agriculture Research at that time in 1973 at RBS College, Bijpuri, Agra. Subsequently, I joined as a scientist in ICR as Port Canning Town, West Bengal, and then to the Orisha University of Agriculture and Technology. But actually the active research career ended when I joined as coordinator, All India Coordinated Research Project, Lean Seed at Kanpur. And since then, maybe that the government 
and the ICI wanted me when the technology mission and I was launched in 1986. Two, three times I was called upon, but I was hesitant because I wanted to pursue my research as well as coordination function. When I was at Kanpur, then I had two PhD scholars enrolled with me, so I was quite happy. But the then director general said that in the national interest, you are essentially required to be at the headquarter to look after the technology mission and oil seeds. And then I ultimately joined there. So actually then the management started from there. And after that, there was no active research whatsoever. So actually my active research period was not a very long period, but I always continue to take interest and enjoy it. So it continues even till today. In each and every work which I do even today, unofficially, always I do experimentation of my own kind, including on myself as well. So it's a kind of habit which is inculcated into and it goes on and on, whether it is formal or informal. Mm -hmm. So it will continue in different form and functions. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, so from you, uh, like after talking to you, I just got to know that at the initial stage, you were onto cytogenetics. You have learned so many things in cytogenetics. Then you switched over to breeding. That's very interesting. So would you please just uh, say a few words? So what really motivated you as a, as a, you know, Actually, I came to the stream of the genetics and plant breeding not because of the fact that in undergraduation, when I got graduated mm -hmm. from the university, I had an idea to go into genetics and plant breeding. Mm -hmm. What happened was, in fact, in BSc final examination, I had the minimum marks in genetics and plant breeding. And the magnitude mark were soil science and agricultural chemistry. Mm -hmm. But I opted for breeding. I applied at Banaras University. Ours was the first batch of genetics and plant breeding. Before that, there was agricultural botany at Banaras University. And then I also applied at Kanpur. It was known as Pathar College. It was not institute even at that time. It was college and then it became institute and then it became University and of course to Panthanagar. Hmm. All three places I applied in genetics and plant breeding, and all the three places I was admitted. But the question was was the tempting point for me to come to the, this stream. When I look back, despite the fact that I had the minimum marks in genetics and plant breeding, but I was fascinated. Why I was fascinated? Simply because of the fact that the teacher who used to taught us this subject in undergraduation, his way of teaching inculcated into me the very basic interest into the subject. He, he used to teach in such a way that we started enjoying it. So it was an enjoyment. Mm -hmm. I can ask me a question that when you enjoy then why you had the minimum marks in this subject. My feeling is that understanding and the way we take examination in the modern days, these are two different things and different ball games all together. So I believe that I had an interest, I had a good understanding and these were the two motivating factor which brought me to the subject of genetics and plant B. You may ask me a question as to why I joined despite the fact that I was admitted at three places. Pathar College in those days was great. Panthanagar mm -hmm. was the first agriculture university doing remarkably well. Then why I joined this at Banaras in the university? Mm -hmm. It is very interesting. I was not knowing anybody. And I was from a very rural background. I came, I was not knowing where to go. And to take decision, I had no guidance. 
So I was just in the evening went into the Banaras Hindu University Central Place, the temple, and in the last I was just resting and thinking about, and it was going on and on in my mind. Where should I go and where should I study? So Arti was going on in the temple, and it the environment was indeed so fascinating that within a fraction of seconds I decided. that here is the place where i should study and next day morning went and i deposited my fee in the banaras hindu university central university counter and therefore this is how i came to the subject of genetics and the institution and to the specialization in a discipline in agriculture there is no there was no guidance it was self driven and you may call it environmental effect mm -hmm. Sure. So you pointed out a very, very important, important question or important point is that, like you mentioned, that the teacher, the way uh, they presented or they taught, that is very important. For, you know, like you just remind me some few early days of my study because I was not really good at biology to be frank. Like not in, I'm not, not at all interested in botany. I remember when in my college days or something. But when I joined. Um, as a student in the undergraduate student one of my teacher he was like teaching very well very well so that's how i grow my interest so it it's quite similar the teachers really play a very good role to interest you know like young students and everything that's very interesting so would you mind uh, to adjust your camera please because uh, we can't really see your full face it should be a bit um, on the top yeah yes now it's covered yeah thank you thank you Sir, uh, yeah, now it's fine. Yes. Thank you very much. As you are asking the very basic question about the teacher, I consider it indeed very, very important. Mm -hmm. If you ask me a question, to be honest, to the core of my heart, I would like to mention that in my whole lifetime, I only wanted to be a professor. Oh. Nothing less, nothing more. Mm -hmm. and in fact when i was in delhi i have applied also for a post but unfortunately mm -hmm. i was not selected otherwise mm -hmm. i could have left this administrative job and i could got to the teaching profession mm -hmm. now when i was a teacher actually i was plant breeder cum reader i was teaching basic my profession was the breeding but do you know realization one day i was to teach take post graduate classes because i started teaching from post graduate and my students used to be brilliant in those days still that university has a tradition where very capable students are there at out which is the second oldest university in the country so one day throughout the night eight hours honestly i studied and there was one problem which i was not able to understand and it was a, a, a very serious situation i thought my students if they will ask this question i will not be able to answer and i will have to cut a very sorry figure and believe me i did not sleep even one minute but i was not having prop solution to the problem next day i went half time i used to give lecture and remaining half time i used to leave for my students for questioning and the first question exactly was which throughout the whole night i was not able to solve and do you know on the blackboard i solved it because when the question came i was not knowing that i don't know that was the power of a teacher probably my whole energy in that environment got concentrated and the answer which i was not able to get throughout the whole night with honest efforts was able to and that is the reason i say and firmly say this is my firm belief that if you want to brush your knowledge you must be even for a short time teacher in a institution because that will help you to understand that will help to brush your knowledge 
that will help you to clarify and be clarity having clarity of thought in your mind and do you know interestingly it's not a occasion to tell but since you have a when my son was in cornell interesting my daughter in law is also from icgb so they wanted to come and then when i said uh, why don't you join a university and the reply was we are interested in research and i said sometimes teaching and research go together and probably teaching will help you enormously god willing good sense prevailed and they joined a university so i believe when i look at and i follow them then i see that being a teacher is helping them enormously to have a understanding of the subject in its entirety and totality so mm -hmm. having understanding of the system having understanding of the subject in entirety and totality having interaction with the students interaction with the students is the best teacher which i have ever thought because mm -hmm. their vibrating questions compel you to think and many clarity of thoughts comes to you when students ask questions therefore i believe and indeed very strongly believe that if one can kind afford of little bit teaching in the career of a researcher would be absolutely essential and would be helping in long run to the person in developing a overall personality mm -hmm. these words are really encouraging for me personally because Uh, i am trying to balance my teaching and research at the same time so these words are really really you know motivating me as a, as a researcher to be frank because as a, as you say to like the questions the students ask really i i every night like next day if i have a class i had to take preparations for a longer time so that i can really answer their questions and if not i i should go back and again study so these are the thing you know like you always keep going with something so that you can learn every day and you can also pass through this motivation to the students so i feel in a way like teaching and research as a researcher both are both can go simultaneously you are absolutely right so on that note i would like to ask you some question about your phd journey so uh, can you tell us some your experience or how did you manage uh, because we know like phd life always like before uh, entering into that we are always very are motivated and somehow we get frustrated also so many stress over there so how did you you manage your stress or how can we as a young researcher can also uh, pass through this long journey can you just share your points in fact banaras hindi university the which is my alma mater where i did masters and phd both so i had no stress whatsoever i was fortunate enough probably but you know the kind of teaching the kind of guidance my professor was professor kumuda viram das from assam mm -hmm. and he said go to the library look for the problems and don't worry i am with you so that was the guidance okay so five six months five six months i went in the library he will never talk to me mm -hmm. and that gave a sense of responsibility a spoon feeding to a student is in my bed just is essentially required to be dispensed with you you as a supervisor be always looking after your students but never never make them dependent in thinking let them think and when we went that this is something which looks sound as fine go ahead then you go on doing experiments if there is any problem you go and ask think about it look into it and then you come this is probably the way out yes in affirmation are certain suggestions and this is how you grow 
I, I will tell you one interesting experience, which probably many of my people who are listening me. It was the first batch in which Banaras University reviewed that is there anybody who has not qualified in bio or both, which used to be the order of the day after the PhD uh, reports are received. It used to take six months, seven months, eight months, sometimes one year, because at that time, one PhD thesis used to go to foreign countries. So two things I learned, which I would like to share. Number one, that my PhD expert, one of the expert from USA, he gave good comments. But the best comment, do you know, which touched me and which I followed throughout my life? He said that I found that, that was the concluding statement. I find the thesis informative and interesting. So I would not like to charge for this review. <laughs> no charge for examiner's fee. Mm -hmm. So to the best of my knowledge and belief, I have also not charged throughout my whole life because that was an education which I carried home. Mm -hmm. The second point which I would like to mention that Baiba Bose was dispensed with, but before the submission of the thesis, there used to be defending of the problem. And mm -hmm. after the reports are received, the whole mm -hmm. faculty used to sit there and they used to ask the questions. So my Bible my boss was not one day. Mm -hmm. First day, it was two and a half hours. Obviously, the Bible boss has to be on what problem you have, what you have done, what are the mm -hmm. comments of the expert, what clarification you have, what contemplate you to take you forward these ideas and these researches in future. So that was over on the first day and that went on reasonably very well. But the then professor and head who had joined recently, by that time, my professor was emeritus professor and retired. So he asked, Mr. Ra, you have done well as far as the subject is concerned, etc., etc." But we would like to understand how you have penetrated inside the subject of genetics. And next day again, whole faculty and grilling for two hours. Mm -hmm. And that grilling, I was taking two ways. One way was that I'm being grilled unnecessarily in the entire subject. And the second way was probably they are very kind enough that they are grilling me to make me an iron man in the future. But really, the kind of questions which were coming, there were many questions which were totally unrelated. And one may call it that it is not uncalled for. Mm -hmm. But the two lessons I learned, my professor, didn't open his mouth. Probably that was the best learning. He wanted me that let this man face all the odds which are likely to be in the offing in his lifetime. And when it was over, I'm sharing with you, I'm indeed, I was extremely tired. Probably that was the lesson that if you want me, I can speak hours together. I do not know how many hours I can speak even mm. in this age. Mm. But the second point which came in my mind was that they are trying to grill me and pin me down. And that is why when it was over, I said, are you satisfied, sir? Everybody said, yes. Then I said, sir, I will wait for the day when you will be a speaker and I will be sitting yeah. in the office. And I waited for that for 12 years. Okay. And after 12 years, the gentleman was a speaker and I was the person in the audience. I asked him seven questions continuously and asked, if you answer one of them rightly, this program can grow through. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, 
then it is essentially required to be dropped. <laughs> and it was dropped. Okay. So the question is, if you have a student, today mm -hmm. I realize and did strongly realize that the supervisor, the faculty, and the institution, it is their moral responsibility to enhance the degree of difficulty, of course, looking that he can be a, but his capacity by increasing the degree of difficulty, you can really make a good human resource for the future. And therefore in each of our institution, the supervisor, the faculty must treat the student like an enemy when he or she is studying and as a best friend when he or she is through. That is what is my relation from my PhD work at Banaras in the University. That's very interesting, sir. Actually, your experience made me to ask uh, the next question, actually, because you already mentioned that you are very good at dealing odds because your supervisor made it you that way. So, uh, sir, I wanted to know that how did you really uh, handle like long-term failure in experiments or some experiments are not really working out? How do you really uh, manage those things in your PhD days or in, in your experiments? No, it is very interesting. And I'm taking the example right from Canning Town, where I served for a small period, Port Canning in West Bengal. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, some experiments were going on. So I thought, uh, let me plan in my way, way. So I have about 1,400 varieties of Brassica juncia, including Brassica campestris, and then barley, hardy, and bulgare, about 600 varieties, a few hundred varieties of wheat, and then I started screening for salinity. And do you know what happened? Mm -hmm. There was a perfect germination. I was very happy, and then I irrigated it. And after three, four days, 99.99% mortality. Oh. All the plants became pell uh, aloe and dried within a week. Mm -hmm. That was a disaster. And do you know, people started saying that this gentleman do not know how to irrigate the field. I'm from a farmer's family working as a farmer even today. I spend a lot of time in my own farm. And this was the allegation and a committee was constituted to look into. And do you know who were the members of that committee? Mm -hmm. Dr. J.S.P. Yadav, late Dr. J.S.P. Yadav, the then director of Central Soil Salinity Research Institute. It was the committee was constituted and R.L. Paliwal, he was director, project director of IRI, Water Technology Center. Dr. K. N. Singh, head of department, Gurnami, because it was an irrigation problem. The committee visited and Dr. N. K. Bajpayee, barley breeder from Kanpur. So they said, Dr. Ra, you have given more water and that is why all the plants have died. <coughs> I said, sir, you are free to submit your report, whatever you feel. But I, from day one, when I have started knowing agriculture, I know how much to irrigate. So they submitted the report and obviously this was the report. But I had no belief there was a farm assistant, Mr. Das. He told, sir, when Sarin Sahab was head of department in Central Soil Salinity Research Institute, such a situation has occurred here, but nobody reported that. Mm -hmm. And then one of my good friend, Dr. R.K. Gupta, who was principal scientist in CIMIT. Mm -hmm. So he was the soil scientist. So we started working and Dr. Gupta fitted porous cup and we went on irrigating and looking how salinity goes up, what situation happens in the real rhizosphere when we irrigate the water. 
and the interesting point is because of hydrolysis and exchange 2.5 times salinity increases actually in the solution so that the shock is there to the plant mm -hmm. and that paper he published in il rezo okay so, you know i faced the inquiry all these mm -hmm. stalwarts Mm -hmm. They are not knowing actually what is happening on the ground, mm -hmm. and they were putting the the blame on the person mm -hmm. who has actually done and reported. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what kind of situation might have been there at that point of time, and mm -hmm. we became much more wiser. Mm -hmm. I had made a dilated analysis day in and day out. I was working in the field. My legs. all the skin has gone there i when i have grown those f ones with the parents in the field and i analyzed the data mm -hmm. because there was there were certain papers by ep steen in those days mm -hmm. from davis california mm -hmm. and for specific ions chloride sulfates carbonates bicarbonates sodium potassium calcium magnesium etc etc and we and the soil scientists dr gupta we worked for months together and do you know we were not able to publish those papers do you mm -hmm. know why mm -hmm. because when we were growing those materials the salinity in extent and content in ionic composition were varying from point to point so the models which i used statistical models based on that the variability is randomly distributed were not the situation the variability mm -hmm. was from point to point and that is why environmental variability used to be more than the genetic variability and that is why who is going to publish those papers who is going to accept those papers but mm -hmm. these were the ground realities and these these were the better educations in the early phase of our life yes definitely i have learned two things from from your experience actually the first thing is initially uh, if uh, i'm just talking uh, this thing for the young scientists or students that initially if some experiments looks like it's a failure may not be a failure at all actually that could lead to a, another you know like another foundation for some new research and also uh, you mentioned a very good thing that reporting about the failure or any kind of thing because negative result is always also a result actually sometimes we hide which is not really uh, good for research or science because that could lead you, you know like as you mentioned that uh, this that thing that happened to you happened before but nobody reported so somehow when you reported and you could lead to a good very good publication so and also reportation is very important that's very important for the young scientists so i would like to ask about something regarding the publications as well you know like uh what do you think about the publication ethics because as you mentioned that reporting and everything this is very important so i want to know your view about the publication ethics like how do you feel about this i think ethics moralities are indeed very very important in science but if you look back to the publication in many of the situation despite the fact that many journals do ask now contribution of each and every person in the article but even if you look back on the ground realities if i am a manager i have to a service function to perform be it a coordinator or be it a director or be it a assistant director general or be it a deputy director general or be it a director general or be it a vice chancellor or be it a dean or be it a director research in a university but if you look back in reality and in totality in many of the situation many of the institution many of the nations you will find that when a person goes to a managerial position his publications are many more than what he used to have as an active researcher it puts a very big question on the very basic ethics and moralities and therefore if you are really a manager of science 
you must look into these issues otherwise the very basic science will not flourish therefore the very basic publication where actual contribution of the researchers and researcher based contributions research based contributions must be the order of the day and this should come in each and every institution each and every discipline in many of the situation i find i i find as a plant breeder that when a person become director or a coordinator in 5 years he has half a dozen varieties how come half a dozen variety in 5 years when you are the director a coordinator you are to provide a serv- you have a service function you are not essentially required to do research it's a different matter that the center where you are here if you are involved you may have one or two varieties in 5 years 6 year 10 years but it is not that six half a dozen varieties anybody and everybody institute developing varieties and your name is there any and everybody doing a publication your name is there if we are not address this in right earnest it would be really suicidal for the science and society and humanity at large and this i see a increasing trend in many of the institution and many of the countries and therefore you raised a very valid question that those who are the manager and who are managing the science must look into this situation and if it is becoming a contagious disease then it is essentially required to be curbed into i do agree with you sir this is uh, like not in the situation not only in uh, india that is the same i think in every country while i am facing the same thing over here so we must raise our voice regarding that i i really do appreciate your thoughts about it that's very encouraging for us sir i would like to ask some few more questions about uh, the plant science uh, for the future like what do you think that um, which sectors in plant science research will prosper in the near future what is your thought about it i think biotechnology if you look back to the crispr technology if you look back to the transgenics if you look back to the molecular breeding much needed precision is essentially required to be looked into so that targeted breeding for genetically tailor made varieties be fitting different region situation and system can be can be order of the day but this will not happen unless and until you do alignments and bring complementarity a biotechnology a molecular breeder a geneticist a breeder and a agronomist an entomologist a pathologist a virologist must join hands together in this arena for varietal development and crop improvement the crispr technology is certainly going to be the order of the day the transgenic technology whether you like or you don't like risk assessment based release has to be the order of the day and we need not to create a phobia so the technology in its right earnest the way the changes are taking place here there and every day the variables the variables which we can control and there are numerous variable infinite variables which you cannot control to manage those situations and to break all kind of crossing barriers and to break all kind of impediments and bottlenecks which are there in conventional breeding these modern tools and techniques will have to essentially restart it too and therefore this domain area domain of operation but i consider and indeed very strongly believe that the genetic resources and in genetic resources i believe that the microbes are not only the gold mine diamond mine and you you call any most precious mine so the very basic microorganisms are going to be to pave the way as a genetic material to meeting the existing and emerging situations 
and therefore in entirety and totality complementarities are essentially required to be capitalized upon say for example many times i do quote an example these genetic diseases corona viruses are being talked here and there and they have become really created a disastrous situation globally but where we are working more than 70% diseases in this world are genetic diseases from animal to human similarly look back to the plants but where are the platforms <coughs> where these people are working together mm -hmm. the people dealing with animals are dealing separately people dealing with human beings <coughs> are dealing separately there is nobody only theoretically we talk about one health concept but where are the platforms mm -hmm. where are the research platforms where we are going to capitalize on the complementarities where we are going to harness these different sectorial boundaries cutting across these sectorial boundaries cutting across the disciplinary mode of operations science mm -hmm. will flourish certainly in the disciplinary mode of Mm -hmm. operation but technology invariably will come in interdisciplinary intersectorial mode of operation mm -hmm. so not only nationally but internationally such platforms are lacking and therefore in this domain of operation for crop improvement for breed improvement for genetic improvement the resources actually there is no barrier to gene flow across plant and animal kingdom mm -hmm. actually today the c3 plants could be made c4 plants and consequently there could be lot of improvement which can be brought about but the disciplinary boundaries the institutional boundaries the departmental boundaries the funding situations and systems are not commensurate with the dimension of the problems and potential which we have they are <laughs> going in a sectorial mode of operation and that is why i believe that the genes the genetic resources the varietal constellations the breed constellation the tailor made genetic materials be feeding our existing and emerging problems be it biotic or abiotic stress management or be it nutritional status of these produce i think much more alignment is required among these so that you can have a holistic overall development you really raised some very important uh, important uh, what to say points to be frank like like interdisciplinary communications is really important like for plant science to the other science even not even to the human science or uh, microorganisms like in inside the plant science also sometimes we really do not coordinate like what kind of research we are doing like everyone is doing their own research so there should be some coordination a common platform you are talking about that's very important like for research forget about the forget about the genetic diseases which i am mentioning let me take the virology yes mm -hmm. virology, virology department is separate mm -hmm. they are doing in their own coterie and then they do not know about the vector vector is being dealt in entomology department they are totally yes. separate they do not know host plant which is totally separate then how can you manage effectively viruses yes you might be publishing wonderful papers on virology mm -hmm. in entomology in plant sciences mm -hmm. but the technology to manage its entirety in totality the technology which you call today is actually a component of technology i am taking example of this virus virus mm -hmm. management so mm -hmm. unless and until you align them mm -hmm. unless and until you create platform the holistic technology for management would be a far cry yes that's that's true that's very true so you mentioned about a very uh, uh, like updated technology in your experience or in your talk that about the crispr technology so uh, i would ask to like it's my personal interest as i am also working with the crispr 
So what do you think about the regulation regarding the CRISPRs? Do you think these are GMOs and um, do we need to really treat the CRISPR materials as GMO? What is your there thought about There are CRISPR areas where there is absolutely no problem and they should be treated as normal varieties, normal products. Yes. So mm -hmm. depending on the marker which you have used and depending on what is there in the material, then mm -hmm. risk assessment. You cannot deal all those in one way. So you have to separate them. There are many events in which the product could be as, as, as good as a normal product. Mm -hmm. So change your look into your seed acts of different countries. Look to mm -hmm. the varietal evaluation. Look mm -hmm. to the release and notification problem. Look to the seed production problem in mm -hmm. the change situations and change context then you mm -hmm. can really harness the very basic potential of these technologies. Yes, very true. Like it should deal uh, a case by case problem, like not the, all the things you cannot really, you know, like deal in the same way or same regulations. You need to really change. So our regulatory bodies should really learn or really need to take the advice from the prominent scientists who are really working with them. So I really appreciate your thoughts on that. Um, mentioning about the this case by case. What is required to be done and in this area domain of operation? Sooner it is done, better it would be for science, society, and humanity. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the pre notions, the preconceived ideas, because looking without looking into the merit of the problem and case to case merit based release should be the order of the day. Yes, yes, definitely. So as I, I, I mentioned that the, the case, case, by case by case situation or something like that, like in our South Asian regions, like especially uh, India, Bangladesh, we are really facing so many problems regarding the climate change and everything. You know, like the salinity problem in our coastal area in Bangladesh, if I said that, that's really horrible. Not only that, this drought is really getting much more higher than the previous situation. So what is your thought about this climate change and what should the regulatory bodies and the world or scientists can do on that? Climate is changing. It will continue to change. There is no reason why it should not change. Mm -hmm. But the issue remains, should it change the way it is changing? Should it change with the same pace as it is changing? Mm -hmm. The answer is, the way it is changing and the pace with which it is changing is indeed challenging and that indeed is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. From ice age to industrial period in 20,000 years, temperature went up maybe about one or two, three degrees Celsius. And in 100 years, more than one degree Celsius and likely to be much more in this century. That is one issue. But if you look back to the Asian report, because since you are Dhaka, you are also coming right in the same area. I'm not worried. A lot more is being said about the sea level rise and coastal areas and inundation. But my friend, very little is being said about affluent areas. And I'm much more concerned about the affluent areas. Say, for example, mm -hmm. the alluvium. If you look back to the population density in the India, if you look back to India in its entirety and totality, we are having five to six times more per unit population pressure than the world average. Same is true with Bangladesh, same is true with Dhaka. Yes. And same situation prevails at the indo gangetic equilibrium right where you are and from where you are asking the questions. Mm -hmm. And if you look back to the Asian report on climate change and its likely impact on zero to 10 vulnerability scale, this Indo-Gangetic alluvium, which is much away from the coastal region is at nine. I'm mm -hmm. repeating zero to 10 scale nine. So the climate change is not what is being talked about, it's very, clear analysis with respect to agriculture and are far and few. The impact on soil biota, how many people are talking about? 80 to 90 percent mm -hmm. soil biological processes are because of these soil biota. How much is study mm -hmm. with respect to the climate change is being restarted to? The water mm -hmm. is so important. 
how many studies are there with respect to these water not only the availability not only the harvesting not only the judicious and effective use of water not only the conjunctive use of water not only the multiple use of water not only the water productivity not only the water use efficiency the very basic quality the very basic quality of the water arsenic problem in neighborhood including your areas and right up to the baranasi district Mm -hmm. it is spreading and becoming very serious what about fluoride problems what about your disease problems what about the insect problems if you look back to the intensity in its entirety and totality the climate change is affecting these situation in numerous ways numerous ways if you look mm -hmm. back to the glaciers himalayan glaciers mm -hmm. if you had been mapped and had data is available for 20 25 years now there are glaciers receding with a speed of 1 meter to 63 meters each year mm -hmm. so the very basic water availability you see today the climate which is there in february it is a very cold year this year Mm -hmm. look back the changes the precipitation the intensity intensity the fluxes the disease spectrum and these insect pest diseases do not recognize passports and political boundaries mm -hmm. and therefore if you look to the entirety and totality agriculture sector is going to face a much serious problem in this climate change mm -hmm. and unfortunately unfortunately the very basic allocation to these researches to mm -hmm. set the agenda in motion and deal with these existing and emerging problems investment mm -hmm. are far and few mm -hmm. the and why they are far and few because mm -hmm. gestation period in research is much higher and mm -hmm. the politicians the policy makers are just engaged in quick bucks at the most they are only going to deal with the medium problems nobody is going to deal with the large the, the which is time consuming problems but unless and until you deal with this climate change management would become indeed very very serious and mm -hmm. far more investment far more research in its entirety and totality would be required in dst i was in their committee for 3 4 years which used to fund and then we use on the climate change management and i look into that the amount which is being spent the man power and the force which is being put the program and policies which are required to be in perspective are there they are not there and much more is being desired even globally the, these issues are not being addressed in the right or next and the priority they deserve so far more is required to be worked into mm -hmm. and you are very correct sir because climate change is inevitable you can really stop it now because you say like uh, how, why this is a natural process that climate will change that's true and the way we are done in dealing with and uh, the management of the climate change that is much more in, interesting and that much more important right now so uh, i i would like to know your uh, concept about the fortification of crops as well you know like uh, recently very recently golden rice has been released in philippines and uh what do you think about it like uh, there are so many varieties as you know that this gene fortified rice and everything so what do you think about it like how how the people change their concept about the thing and what should they really think about it because normally uh if i i share my concept from my point of view from bangladesh like so many people are not really interested uh, for taking any gm crops or not even the golden rice they although we are suffering for this vitamin a deficiency for a longer period so we have like this golden rice the field trial is going on maybe more than 5 to 10 years i would say like more than 5 years i'd, I'd say and bangladesh was almost ready to release the variety but um, so many regulatory things and we could not in the meantime philippines released the golden rice so i want to know your perception regarding this golden rice as well as so many biofortified crops are coming into the markets so what do you think about this biofortification 
I, as an individual, and in my best judgment, anybody who is a rational thinker about science and technology for well-being of human being, would always be supportive of the kind of technology which can make a dent and which is a force to reckon with. Mm -hmm. I believe and indeed very strongly believe that the fortification of the varieties are essentially required to be and they, in my best judgment, would be the order of the day. Mm -hmm. Then why all these things are happening? There are two, three ways. Mm -hmm. Number one, first, we as a regulators have to search our heart as well. Mm -hmm. We as a regulator must essentially look into, and I will take you two, three examples which I have dealt with. When I was Deputy Director General Crop Sciences in the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, it was at that point of time that BT cotton was released. And do you know in the first meeting, the first year, if you look back, we have outright rejected those materials. Because the data which were generated, it was amply demonstrating that these materials are not going to be a force to recon with. And we suggested that the gene is important but the genes should be in an appropriate agronomic background. And do you know, when it was put in appropriate agronomic background, it started going like a wildfire. And you may recall a variety which was not even identified by the committee in Gujarat has captured in far more area. So putting the gene in appropriate agronomic background so that it becomes a force to recon with, the material has to be superior at least in one but inferior in none. And mm -hmm. if it is superior with the tangible gains today or tomorrow, the user would like it. Mm -hmm. When I say that we should look into then say, for example, why people criticize the isolation requirement for a foundation seed production in maize, where 99%, 98.5% genetic purity is required, is minimum yet for Indian standards. If you look back to Indian standards, Blue Book, as per the Indian Seed Act 1966 and Rule Regulation of 1969. If you look back there, Isolation required 900 meters. But when for a genetically modified material, they went into for testing, they created a genetic distance, they recommended only 300 meters. Okay? Mm -hmm. So where 0% pollen dispersal is essentially required to be the order of the day, 300 meter, and where 98 98% Purity is required in 900 meter. It can be more than 900 meter, but it cannot be less than 900 meter. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing out the, the flaw and drawbacks which we regulators put at. The mm -hmm. third point which I would like to mention without any aspersion on anybody. Amaman gene was cloned from amaranth. Mm -hmm. What a marvelous job it was done. But where it was put? It was put not only in cultivated potato, but it was put in wild potato. Wild potato is grown in pots. It is not even half an acre anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And so many publication and so much there that this would be distributed in the midday meals. Where is the midday meal? Where is that product? Despite mm -hmm. the fact that Ama gene was indeed a very potential gene. Mm -hmm. This was from a source which is considered very good, mm -hmm. plant source. But because we researchers in hurry have not been put situation in right perspective, so this gives an opportunity for regulators and those people who want to be against such situations. So first, the point which I'm trying to drive home is that we researchers must have clarity of thoughts we must have a perspective. 
we regulators must look into right perspective and look into the situation its entirety in totality and we must put right kind of experimentation or validation mm -hmm. and the third point is education education is one awareness creation and awareness creation is absolutely absolutely essential and therefore these three put together must move forward so that these technology with valuable products can help the humanity today malnutrition is rampant the amount of micronutrients and secondary nutrients which are you are siphoning and mining and you are not replenishing consequently day in and day out the agricultural produce which you are going to have which vegetables are beet fruits are beet cereals are pulses are millets are milk because if uh, these deficiencies are there in fodder and feed milk again meat so these deficiencies are bound to be rampant and this you can deal with the kind of fortification which is essentially required not only for nutrient uptake but for utilization as as well as the kind of constellation you want for zinc boron sulfur vitamins all kind of fortification and therefore in my best judgment coming days are going to be the days of these technologies and these products we must address at research level we must address at policy sector levels we must address at regulator levels and we must bring a very strong mass movement and campaign to bring awareness about science technology potential and value of these products and that in my best judgment would be a great service to humanity yes uh, like you pointed out very very important role of like all like not only the regulators like scientists should think very clearly about their experiments as you mentioned about the potato wild potato experiment uh sometimes we do the experiments that's true but we should think at the end of also like i remember one of my like my postdoc supervisor used to see uh used to tell me very well like tamina you always need to see if, if there is any light on the other side of the tunnel if you see that you are doing something and there is some light then you should do the experiment other than not so we also should really think about before any experiment and everything how can we really proceed with that sir i will turn uh into a different angle right now like um, some different questions because you have so many roles you played so many roles and so many positions you have obtained so i would like to know your view about the you know like uh, about the women empowerment in science like as a women like me like shoma young scientists who they are working what is your thought about the women empowerment in science because uh, to be frank sometimes we struggle getting uh, the fund as i might might uh, mention over here uh, also the position as well so uh, would you please uh, tell your point of view on this regard you are already in power women are in power women <laughs> are doing remarkably well i don't want to compare girls are doing better than boys i am nowadays because i go to different convocation of university the medals which you are getting girls are getting about twice the number as the boys are getting so you are mm -hmm. empowered that is number 1 mm -hmm. number 2 when i was a student at banaras in the university there was only one girl student in the entire faculty mm -hmm. and today there are universities in india where more than 50% students are girl about 40% students are girl students so they are empowered and i would say and firmly say that you are doing omen contribution omen are doing omen contribution to science and society and they are competing indeed extremely well in mm. fact i would like the kind of complementarity which is required must prevail and both put together must work for science and society and people are working 
Now, now I don't see in agriculture field any empowerment issue. You are empowered now. I believe when it is very strongly. Okay, that's that's very nice. So words from you, sir. Uh, I would like to know about your experience. Like as I uh, heard already, that I know that you you were serving as uh, you were serving as a uh, vice chancellor of GB Pant University. So it was an uh, administrative post, and you also worked as a director general of ICAR. So, sir, would you please uh, mention your journey as a you know, scientist to administrator? So, because I, I remember, like uh, one of my professor, like you, you must know him, like Dr. Shulman Mukherjee from ICGB. Uh, once he mentioned me because uh, I got a job in the civil service of Bangladesh, and when I was a PhD student, and he kind of forced me that Tamina, you should go and join there. I said, why? He said. You know, like you know the background, you know the science, and you can really contribute to the regulatory part of the uh, in, as an administrator. Because sometimes we struggle with the regulatory board; they really don't understand our point of view from the scientist point of view. So it's difficult. He said you can negotiate. So as you have both the you played both the roles. So what is your journey as a vice chancellor, also, also as a director general of ICAR? What do you think about it? The issue is the very basic management i never wanted to be in the management i said initially that i wanted to be only a professor in my lifetime mm -hmm. i said before without a question mm -hmm. but situation the technology mission on all seats came into being and probably the then director general wanted me in fact I, I I was called on telephone. I went there. I joined, and then the order was issued. It was very interesting. This is how, and I had a dual charge of coordinator also for two three years, and I wanted always to come back. I wrote, but he never allowed me to come back. Mm -hmm. Probably, and that very clearly indicates that uh, my interest was in teaching and research and research and teaching alone, but. Having said that, when I went into the management, I was agriculture commissioner to the government of India as well. I was director national agriculture technology project. So many positions at a time. When I was deputy director general, I was having all these three positions. So deputy director general was the biggest department in ICR. At mm -hmm. that time, I was for one year almost agriculture commissioner for almost one year uh, simultaneously director technology mission and um, uh, so, sorry uh, national agriculture technology project which was a 1000 crore project mm -hmm. but two three things has always been my in my upper my mind number one immediate disposal It would be hard for anybody when I was in service that anybody would see paper on my table. People will not be able to find out that whatever is required to be done today, you will find that paper with me to be disposed of tomorrow. So that is mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. Why I'm mentioning these three positions having together, but you will not find a paper for the next day. There is one or two days in my life when I was on tour, I have not slept even for one minute. Till the last paper is disposed, I have not gone home. Second point, my house, my home, my family, and my office is totally different. People would not see me taking paper to house and people will not see me taking paper from house to home, to office. Third point, Anybody who is the worst enemy, even I have no enemy whatsoever. But when I have to take a decision, the decision would be in entirety and totality only on merit. No pressure whatsoever or no other issue would be allowed to be taken in. In financial matters, I have been making many rules. I have been breaking many rules. But I have been taught in my life by one of the gentlemen 
that do whatever you like, but you write why you are doing this. So if you see my decision making, I write why I want to do this. And when you will write, then only you would be looking into the merit. And if it is merit based situation would not be problematic. Mm -hmm. the, the gentleman who is organizing from Bairakpur, I will take two instances from there itself. There was a time when it was a turmoil in the institute. And when I became deputy director general in 1997, this was the institution where there was maximum problem. So I paid a, my first visit to this institution. And I was told that the, before that, the deputy director general who has gone to the institute, he was out at the gate and after six hours he returned back. So the most problematic, I went to this institution. From the airport, director said, would you like to stay, sir, in Calcutta? I said, no, don't you have a guest house? He said, yes, sir. I said, I will stay in your guest house. So from the airport, Dr. D.P. Singh was the director at that point of time. I went to the guest house. It was about 3.30 or 4 p.m. I said, tomorrow I would visit the farm. I would start my visit from the farm. So. At what time, sir? I said, 8 o'clock in the morning, field visit. I will start at 8 o'clock. So he said, sir, nobody comes before 10 o'clock here. I said, no, no problem. If no scientist is there, I myself will see those experiments. So you don't ask anybody to come. So just give a circular that my visit would start from X plot and finish at Y plot. At 8 a.m., this plot, it will start. Don't ask anybody to come. Mm -hmm. And to my utter surprise, at 8 a.m., when I was the plot, the gentleman was there. And not a one person in the entire institute, mm -hmm. not on time and not on dot in his or her plot. Mm -hmm. And after visiting at 11 o'clock, next farm, there are two farms. First is main and second beyond the road. So in that, after the visit, it was about 11.30. We are well tired. So I sat mm -hmm. on the ground and there were about 50 people. They sat there. In those days, this coconut was costing two rupees. So I took 200 rupees from my pocket and I said, bring coconuts, we are all thirsty. Mm -hmm. So about 50 people were there. We took, we started gossiping. And do you know what they said? Mm -hmm. Sir, now you go, there will no problem here. I said, what will happen? He said, sir, there is no deputy director general who is sitting in the land. I said, sir, if you are tired, there will be a kursi in the field. And after that, there was no problem. The second instance I would like to bring to your kind attention those who are dealing with management. From mm -hmm. the same institute, their station is at Bamra. Uh, sorry, uh, in Assam. Sorbhog and Bamra. One is in Orisha, another is in Assam. So from Assam in the Bodo land, one of the farm superintendent of that institute was abducted. And they were asking 12 lakh half rupees. Okay, I'm sharing with you. And then one month has passed despite all the forces from India. And I had good friend in the Ministry of Homes. The, the Home Secretary was very close friend. They said, Dr. Rao, now it is not possible. They have taken to another country, that gentleman who is neighboring countries. Do you know what did I do? Mm -hmm. Sasha was the additional secretary. Additional secretary at that time used to be the secretary of the ICR. So see, still that situation continues. I asked her to issue an order that that station stands closed with immediate effect and stops should be asked to join, give, give preferences where they would like to join so that we can transfer them. Mm -hmm. She said, sir, you can't do this. You have no power. I said, I know that. Please do it. After again half an hour said, sir, we have a wonderful relationship of working, sir. This is within not your power. I said, this is 
order, go and comply with. An order was issued. So in the mm -hmm. same car, we started going to, because I used to drop her at IRI. She used to stay at the guest house before going to home. So she said, mm -hmm. Dr. Rai, would you kindly tell me how you could do such a blunder and such an order? I said, if you would not tell anybody, I will tell you. Did you know what I'm, I, I said, I know my powers that I don't have these powers to close this station, but I'm testing the water and you will see the results. Do you know after four days that abducted man was brought by those people and left in the farm. And then I order when this fax came, I order mm -hmm. inquiring to as to why this gentleman has been taken. And the inquiry report came and it came out that there was a boundary wall which was being constructed at a cost of 32 lakhs. So they were asking 10% of that. So how come this man is involved? Because that man, because CPWD is doing the construction, but this man has arranged that contract to one of his relatives. And that is why this man was taken. And de facto, it was he who was dealing. That is why this farm superintendent were taken. And when this order was issued that these stands closed, so this will have a very bad repercussion in the mind of the people that a station is closed, which were doing a good service for us. That is why those people who have abducted him, they brought and left. And I'm not going to share more, for sometimes more, Dr. Maiti, who is also from West Bengal, he was coordinator at that time, Bangalore, Birappan has abducted him and we got him released. At that time, I was president of the All India Agriculture Service Sciences Forum. And I had had discussion with the then Home Minister, late Mr. Indrajit Gupta at Stern Court, and we compelled to make a situation that Birappan brought and left, left that gentleman to the guest house next day morning. I will not tell you how it happened because that would be a long story. So this is all about management. This is not science, but principle-based scientific management is absolutely essential and this is called for. I, I'm, I'm not trained anywhere in management, but if you don't like me, why should I stay? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you. Mm -hmm. There are at least in these positions which you mentioned, I have at least two, three times resigned. Mm -hmm. Many people doesn't know. Either it is accepted or not accepted many times. When it was, it, it, I compared that I'm not going to stay, then people know that he did, he resigned actually. But before that, even as DG, there was an occasion, but nobody has taken my resignation. At deputy DG, I had resigned once. I'm sharing with you after 15, 20 years. Because there was differences and principles. Mm -hmm. So we scientists serve the science and society. I, whether I serve here or if I have a knowledge and understanding, my value will always be there and it would go many more times. So why should a scientist should bury? And therefore a scientist, if he really follow principle best management, then probably he would be able to do a much better management job because he has no stake whatsoever. If a scientist is a manager and he leaves the job, and if he's good, he is having a market, and market will certainly pay much more than what he or she is going to get there. Therefore, in management, you follow principle based, you follow the appreciation of merits, and you would be successful. Thank you, sir. Like your your suggestions and your experience definitely would help us. Like uh, like the people we are here, uh, we have to balance between the management and also research and teaching and so many things that would be very very appreciable. Sorry for your comments. So I would like to or uh, like uh, whatever you share your experiences with us. Those are for the management and for the uh, capabilities of the researcher and everything. But you have a long experience with you know like. Uh, to deal, how to deal with the scholars and also about the students. So I would like to know, uh, like your point of view, or would like to seek some advices for the students and or the young researchers who are really new to plant science. Would you please like advise some of some of your experience for them? 
Uh, indeed, a brilliant question. Science, unless and if you are sensitive, you can't be a good scientist. So any science, science manager has to essentially address the sensitivity concerns of his students and his scholars. And therefore, you must always value their thoughts, their feelings. And if you differ with them, then you convince them by means of arguments. And if you give right arguments, I'm pretty sure in my lifetime, this is my experience, that these people are in these amenable, valuable, and manageable as long as you appreciate their sensitivity. If you do not appreciate their sensitivity, you are killing science, you are killing society. Yes, thank you, sir. Like uh, the questions from my side is uh, like, uh, I, I don't have any more. Like you shared your experience and those are really helpful for me. And I, I'm sure like pretty much the students and the audience, they are listening. Those are very helpful for them as well. Now I, I would like to hand over to Shoma. If there are some questions from the audience, they would like to know from you. That would be very nice. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure to talk to you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. It was indeed a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Tamina. It was great. <clears throat> okay, so I will... Uh, ask some questions from the audience now, sir. Uh, so uh, our uh, global audience is watching you and hearing your uh, wonderful uh, talk. So um, there is one person from, um, I don't know the country, but is, his name is uh, Ephraim uh, Vorku. Uh, that person says that in our country, plant breeding is in its infant stage. No modern lab and research platform still a conventional approach prevailing. So how can we join the modern breeding system? Conventional is not bad. Start with the conventional and type it towards the most modern one. And in conventional, one of the greatest plant breeder, Mr. NK Bajpayee, who I was mentioning that he was in my committee to inquire into as to what wrong I have done. I asked him a question, sir, you are a great plant breeder. Would you tell me what is the trick and tip of your success? He said, Dr. Rai, as a plant breeder, we are taught for selection. A good plant breeder must understand rejection. Everything we keep to our chest and that is why we get confused with a huge population and use materials. The precise point which I'm trying to drive home is that where primitive plant breeding is on, even the existing genetic variability can essentially be trapped upon and very basic selection and rejection can help you. From there, you can use conventional tools and techniques and little bit you can go for marker assisted selections and thereafter you can move further forward. I will tell you one instance, sorghum. Sorghum is a cross pollinated crop and as Deputy DG, we used to fund from the CES fund and one project has said where a gentleman has said, I will have a motorcycle and I will go into the area and I will do selection. So three referees have rejected this and in the committee, there was a laughter that what a foolish this project was. And I as a chairman said approved. And the traveling expenses is enhanced. Okay. Then I explained that Maldandi 35 is a variety which is being grown in Maharashtra state for decades together. It is being cross-pollinated. Lot of variability might have been thrown and we don't know. This gentleman will go from post to pillar in each and every field and collect and evaluate. And let us see. And do you know? 
in three years the amount at rahuri university the after three years when i visited and saw it was astonishing for me to see the kind of variability which has been thrown and a few variety came out of it mm -hmm. so even in such situation and such countries where facilities are not much developed manpower is not developed resources are not developed trap on the existing genetic variability select the right kind of materials evaluate them and utilize them and then go from conventional means move forward to modern tools and techniques okay sir um what is the um, i mean zishan sheik asks uh, what is the scope of study on rodents as agricultural pests <laughs> <laughs> very serious situation one of the all india coordinated project in india which we had we had on rodents with its headquarter at jodhpur Mm -hmm. so after decades of working we were having no control whatsoever and that is why we closed the project and when the order for closing the project was issued the coordinator the then coordinator wrote me a do letter because at that time air india now which is with tata he wrote that a few days before a rat was detected in a indian airlines plane an imagine a situation if it could not have been detected and removed and it could have cut a few wires and there could have been short circuits what a disaster could have appeared right then i replied to him well gentlemen you are absolutely right they are a menace but the kind of research program which you have pursued and which you are having in the offing this is not going to address the issue to the desired extent and therefore this project with its extent and content and mm -hmm. with the kind of programs which you have is not going to serve and not going to justify the scarce resources so the project was closed mm -hmm. but the fact remains that this is a menace and this is require a kind of efficient effective and relevant technologies mm -hmm. so it is for the researchers to sit together brainstorm and come with a concrete proposals with a force to recon with so that you can go for funding agencies in different countries and different institutions and organizations to deal to have a technology to deal with this kind of menace but i totally agree this is very serious but the technologies which were in the offing in the farmers fields they were not able to make much dent hmm. okay uh, sir s k das asks uh, small and fragmented land holdings in india is one of the major problems in indian agriculture what are the solutions to overcome this problem and uh, can we go now for mechanization in indian agriculture my friend i never thought in my life then in, in small fields combined would be the order of the day but in india with these fragmented holdings and you know very small holdings now combined has become the order of the day custom hiring basis farm implement machinery in many areas of this country for harvesting for threshing for binnowing custom hiring even the irrigation system on custom hiring india is the biggest producer and user of tractors in the whole world hmm. now tractor custom hiring basis has become order of the day so in india land reforms are essentially required to be the order of the day one was consolidation of holding which was done it has helped tremendously in many states in many areas it is yet to be done so that is required to be pursued number 2 farming machinery particularly in the rain fed agriculture 
timeling, sewing, sewing at the right depth, etc., etc., would pave the way. So custom hiring would be the second. Third, joining hands together, farmers joining hands together, having associations, having their systems so that they are able to have technology, material, fertilizers, pesticides, use, et cetera, et cetera, together. And finally, government must look into the reforms, land reforms, land use plans. Land use plans actually are absolutely essential. But land use plans, despite the fact that India do have a institute of land use planning, but we do not have land use simply because of the fact that their soil water testing went into zero to 50,000 scale, which was not at all suitable for land use plan. Now they have come down to zero to 10,000, but this is not available for the country as a whole, but there are many districts, many blocks where it is available. So land use plans, must also be looked into. So this sector is required to be addressed to from policy angles, from custom hiring agencies, for institution association angles, from structural adjustment angles. So all angles are required to be taken into cognizance so that farm holdings are <coughs> bankable, usable, doable. Right. Uh, sir, uh, Rajendra Yadav asks, what are your thoughts on the importance of germplasm and its exchange system in India and its neighboring countries? In fact, not only the neighboring countries, when I said one word I use, word is one gene pool cutting a class plant and in Ingle Kingdom. And this is the permutation, combination, and genetic constellation and manifestation of traits interacting with varying environments are likely to offer long-lasting solution to the existing and emerging problems of the world. So mm -hmm. genetic resources are indeed very, very important. And globally, this is required to be addressed too. Mm. And as far as the Indian subcontinent is concerned, as far as SARC countries are concerned, they essentially need to join hands together. As I said, insect pests and diseases do not recognize passports and political boundaries. If there is a rust, it will not differentiate between Bangladesh and India. Mm. It will not differentiate with Myanmar. It is not differentiate with Sri Lanka and Bhutan. Mm. And therefore, similar is the situation as far as pests are concerned. And diseases and pests, as per one estimate, there are 30 million insects, mm. 1.5 million your um, fungi, hmm. about 8 million bacteria and viruses are put together, if you look back, almost 50 million. It is estimate, it might be 40, it might be 30, but it is in millions. So with the existing and emerging problems and with the movements of materials and human beings and trafficking, this whole region in its society and totality must try to insulate and not only the sharing of the genetic resources, but also the very basic quarantine requirements mm -hmm. must be brought in focus as in the European Union, their quarantine regulation in the Union. Similar is the situation in India and similar is the situation because even in the Seed Act, say for example, if you go to Japan, in Japan there are prefectures, and each prefecture, prefecture is like our districts, is governed by a person who is called governor of that prefecture. 
It is the governor of the prefecture who decides as to who is going to certify the seed. Mm. And do you know, if there is a seed borne disease, the tolerance limit, do you know how much it is? It is not 99.9%. It was, it is 100.00%. So zero tolerance. So the question is, the genetic resources, not only the collection, conservation, evaluation, documentation, but it's very basic utilization. Even these countries essentially required on certain issues to develop and do pre-breeding together and share. Because if this whole region is insulated, hmm. then we are certainly a secure region. And in this process, nobody is going to lose. Everybody is going to gain and gain enormously and tremendously. So sooner we join hands, better it would be for the humanity. Amazing. Uh, sir, uh, similar question from Shovik Dash. He asked that, how can we connect the R&D sector with the farmers so that they can get proper support and information from our research and development? In fact, research, education, and extension are the three constituents in a land grant pattern of agricultural institution, agriculture universities in the region, in our country. Mm -hmm. So it is already interlinked. But how far you can travel with the kind of resources. The educational budget, I know the reason. I know the country in the reason. The money available for research, most of the money is going only in establishment, salary, working expenses are as good as nil. Somewhere it is 5%, somewhere 10%. And in the ideal system which runs research, it has to be 60, 40, 60% 60 establishment, 40% expenses available. Mm -hmm. So how much contingency you have for research? How much contingency you have for education? How much contingency you have for extension? So number one, this. Mm -hmm. So enhance resources. Number two, research. Mm -hmm. Set up cannot own all these together. The extension system, which is there in different countries, virtually has collapsed. Virtually it has collapsed. So it is required to be revived, reoriented, and coherent synergies are required to be harnessed. The very basic extension in research in extension is required. Mm -hmm. I hope you follow what I'm talking. Research in extension, because ground parameter has gone a change and it has gone a sea change. Mm -hmm. the, the very basic means mechanism and system of communication, it is no more leaflet, pamphlet. Mm -hmm. the, the electronic media, sensor-based decision support system, etc., etc. The public and private sector, the PP mode of operation, etc., etc. So this whole required to be addressed to in its entirety and totality and with adequate resources, bringing different stakeholders, players and partners together. Now, this whole thing is required to be rewritten, re-implemented and a lot more major surgery is required state after state and country after country in the region. Right. Sir, uh, <clears throat> we heard a lot of your views and thoughts and got your insights. Uh, sir, one uh, last question from you. Uh, what sort of changes would you want to see in Indian agriculture? We would like to see the agro ecosystem in such a way that it fits indeed extremely well in the ecosystem so that the technology is capable enough to pay dividends mm. on a long-term sustainable basis to farm, family, and livestock. It continue to serve the resources as well as the science so that we continue to be sustainable. 
sustainable farm mm. sustainable family mm. sustainable livestock sustainable state sustainable institution sustainable nation and finally reason and the world at large so the very basic sustainability will come only when we will develop such an efficient effective and relevant agro ecosystem fortified with technologies befitting technology so that it fits into the ecosystem and ecosystem is able to sustain very well said sir uh, so uh, this uh, brings us to the end of our session uh, let's uh, see if shuva has any more questions mm. uh, <clears throat> no uh, i uh, i before that i wanted to shoma please read out uh, few selected compliments because lot of people are excited many people love this talk because sir put so many things is 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 from uh, student aspects from policy maker aspects from researcher aspects so everybody loved it yes. i just uh, take few a compliment uh, as a souvenir from the webinar i wanted to can you read out sure uh, deepika singh says a very enriching experience it's an honor to get a chance to listen to uh, professor mangala rai sir uh, then uh, john uh, vasant says uh, thank you so much for arranging very informative webinar uh, then there is um... thank you very much thank you very much i would share in this limited time one thing when i was a teacher to my students in those days these hand typewriters were there mm -hmm. so I, i used to give a paper and a lifafa envelope mm -hmm. and ask them only to type criticism as to what are the weaknesses which i have while teaching them in that course no appreciation whatsoever therefore i would like each teacher on this very day to ask the people to criticize them without knowing as to who is criticizing this world today has only a problem and the biggest problem is we have become all psychophants of appreciations everybody likes appreciation and people have started appreciation please i would be grateful if you would kindly send me personally as to what are the weaknesses which you have seen in me while is speaking that would be a real gain to me thank you and thanks a lot to one and all thank you very much thank so, you sir, so much sir in the in the session in that way the appreciation appreciation is there but uh, sir no <laughs> the situation uh, sir i wanted to ask uh, one to uh little bit personal questions uh, like you already mentioned that work and home is different don't bring the work at the home and uh, not only me many researchers uh, like that and love it i'm sure shoma also love it this situation <laughs> so uh, an another thing is uh, when you travel in so many country so many location uh, areas then uh, what what Uh, what was your uh, means packing or uh, what should bring or this type of things because it's also bother us when we try to travel let, that let, let me say when the age limit of 60 to 62 was increased in india hmm. on that day i was in nairobi kenya okay union building Yes. on the same day cabinet meeting has taken place at about 7 730 on the same day proceeding has been issued all the institutions were asked in the country to open, to keep their fax machines ready mm. and by 12 o'clock in the night order was served to everybody otherwise people could have retired i was in nairobi and it was being controlled from nairobi okay Hmm. if you are a busy man you have a time if you are not busy you have no time whatsoever <laughs> and if you are sincere to your job and to your purpose anything and everything is possible the only thing impossible is what you cannot think and act upon okay is a great great uh, thing sir and uh, one one 
uh, thing is, uh, as your wife also a doctor, right? So uh, are you talking about each other problems or related to planning? Because sometimes uh, before going to discuss to your supervisor or your uh, peer, uh, when 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 we were married, then I was doing PhD at Banaras Hind University. So she used to help me in tabulating the data, my research data. Okay. And subsequently, she is a Sanskrit scholar. So there is no direct linkage with the kind of research which I deal with. Mm-hmm. But the peace, prosperity, and tranquility. She maintains in the house that indeed is a greatest contribution. Okay, thanks. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. So, thanks, sir. It's it's also related to us. Uh, Shoma many times do my first draft checking or corrections because I am from a Bengali background uh, and Shoma is from Kondan, so her English is much better than me. So I took the advantages in that way, and also uh, it's built a, a one type of. Uh, bonding uh, when we talk about the science and arts. Uh, so, sir, uh, this is uh, I wanted to say thanks, and uh, many people loved it. And I am little bit uh, worried about the audience because this is the first time we do the motivation of speaking in bioengine. So, uh, I thought that what uh, what happened, but uh, I'm sure that Mangala said talks. Uh, I know. Uh, I I heard. He's him amazing. Time. He's truly yes, amazing. Yes, yes, and it it you can you can uh, go for the five six hours. There is no, <laughs> there is so many humorous story and the takeaway messages. Every answer he gave in that way that the initials. So it's a writing writer writing. It has introductions. It has the methods and it's the result. Mm-hmm. So thanks, thanks, sir, very much. I will share all the information. About three hundred fifty people are likely watching. I I thought, or maybe more than that. I I'm not. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I collect all the questions. I will send the questions, and uh, as you say, that what we can. Uh, you, but I am. I don't want. <laughs> we are very very. Uh, uh, we are not in the position to comment on your talks because it's uh, you are a mentor for us, and we try to learn uh, many things. And one last uh, point I make in that your talk that you told that you were not taking any money for uh, reviewing or uh, the examiner's fee. So it's also give me some confidence that okay we we can continue bioengine without nee, taking nee. any money. मैं जो हूँ वो बिहार के चीफ मिनिस्टर का कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर रैंक में तीन साल एडवाइजर था. मैंने तनखा तो छोड़ दीजिए मैंने ना टीए लिया ना डीए लिया ना एक छोड़ दीजिए. <laughs> well, if uh, whatever pension you get is good enough yes sir yes uh, so uh, this is our intention also to bring the bioengine as a free platform yeah, and good. make it free for everybody very good all the best congratulations thank you so much thank, thank, you, thank you sir thank, thank you, sir. you thank sir. you thank you so much indeed a pleasure okay thank you. thank you thank you thank you sir and thanks shoma thanks tamina to to thank you for... okay <laughs> yes yes i know you have another meeting <laughs> Uh, okay. Soma, please uh, stop the sharing. Thanks, sir. And uh, this meeting is uh, uh, ended here. We will meet again in twenty fifth of this month uh, to another uh, webinar on that. Uh, thanks for every uh, every participants, and if it's possible to uh, just share this video link to others to know many things. Uh, I'm not uh, generally. all that but for this webinar i request everyone that please share to young researchers to students to policy makers to writers everyone because it's a great opportunity for us to listen dr mangala rai or professor mangala rai uh, every time when you listen it you learn something from him yes. and his uh, his views on gm his views in a modern agri tech views on everything is so modern and show changing with the time is is a perfectly blend with any systems or any country thanks thanks for watching our 45 webinars in this series let's meet in 25th of february in this live youtube channel thank, thank you, you.